Hello there, welcome back to the channel. Well, today's video is gonna help you a lot with troubleshooting. I'm gonna show you how to filter um, based on IP addresses, based on MAC addresses, what are the you know tips and tricks in doing that. Well, I tell you what, you would have never seen this information before. Yes, just, just kidding, you, you might have. But anyways, <laughs> let's begin. But before that, how about this? This is the same packet capture I'm using um, you know that that I used in the last video. How about we uh, grab a new one from uh, Cloud Shark and uh, yeah, try stuff on that. Let's grab the packet capture for OSPF. So let's go to Cloud Shark and I'm going to say Cloud Shark and then OSPF. Hit enter. As soon as you hit enter, you can go for the very first link, which is OSPF neighbor adjacency. This particular link, I'm going to click on it. I'm going to see the packets pop up on Cloud Shark. There you go. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and click on export and then download the file, the option right here, right? As I've shown in the previous videos as well. In the previous video, not all the videos. Anyways, download file, download the original file, then click on download file and you'll have the file right here. Okay. Let's go ahead and open up the file and proceed accordingly. Okay, so here we have the packet capture. Let me show you the first filter for the IP addresses. IP.addr equals to equals to the IP address in question is 192.168.12.1, as we can see right here, right? We got 12.1 as an IP address, and we got 12.2 as an IP address. I'm going to use um, one of these one by one to go ahead and show you how this filter actually helps, right? So, as you can see right now, there are 25 packets uh, in the packet timeline, right? And at the bottom as well, the, the uh, you know, I've explained it in the other videos. Anyways, I'm not going to talk about that right now. 192.168.12.1. I'm going to hit enter now. Out of the 25 packets, 24, no, no, not 24. At the bottom, we can see 19 packets are actually displayed, right? Uh, out of the 25, 19 have this IP address, either as the source, or a destination, right? As you can see, when I do IP.addr, when I apply this filter, I see 12.1 on this end, and I see 12.1 on this end as well. So the IP.addr filter is going to make sure wherever this IP address is, if it's in the source, if it's in the destination, it's going to fetch it out for you. Okay, now what if you want to make sure only the IP address uh, from the source end should be taken. So if you have 192.168.12.1, on the source end, only then, only those packets should be seen. So you'll just change ADDR to SRC. That's it. Hit enter. 12.1 on the left side now. Why? Because the left side is a source end now, right? Not here. It's not seen here. It's going to be seen here. Why is that? That is because we set IP.SRC, which is IP source. Whenever the source is, what? Whenever the source is, 192.168.12.1. Okay, I want to see all those packets that have this IP address as a source. And there you go, it's filtered. And these are 12 packets in total. Okay, now if you want to do, if you want to do it as a destination, right? Okay, let's do it. You'll change SRC with DST which is destination, right? So if you do that, hit enter as the destination, you got 12.1 on the destination end, right? And from this side, you have 12.2, but we didn't do anything about it. It could be anything else as well. We did this in this case, right? And this one happened on its own. I mean, the rest of the things just happened on its own. We filtered it uh, based on this column, right? Destination ip.dst, whichever packet has the destination as 192.168.12.1, we need to see those packets. And these are the packets, right? And these are seven in total. Right. Okay, let me show you another way. Okay, so let's go ahead and let me show you another way of doing it. Let's say you want to look for two IP addresses. Right now, we were doing just one IP address, right? So I can do IP dot addr equals this or ip dot addr equals to equals to let's say 1.1.1.1 as an example just as an example i hit enter and i'll see how many packets 19 packets 
Why is that? Because there is no 1.1.1.1, obviously in this case, but we have an or condition. We have or here. We don't have an and. If I put and in there, it's, go it's not going to show me any packets, right? If I have and here, it's not going to show me any packets because what will be the condition in that case? In that case, we're asking it, hey, is the IP address, if the IP address is this in a packet and you have this IP address as well in that packet, only that go ahead and display those packets, right? In that case, there'll be no packet seen, right? Because we used or in between, that's why we see only those packets that have 12.1 because there's no 1.1.1.1, right? Let me just show it to you. So if I use and instead of or, this is just Boolean operations. Hit enter, there you go, you don't see anything because there's no packet which has both of these IP addresses. And means the uh, condition on the left side and the right side of and both have to be true. If you have an or here, this means the condition on the left side or the right side has to be true. If one of them is true, it's going to be true. The overall result will be true. I hit enter and I see these 19 packets, right? This is another way of doing it. Let me show you another one, quick one. Okay, now if I want to search for an IP address from here, I don't literally need to type it. I can click on the IP address itself, right? Let's say something like 224.005. Let me do this. I just put it in here. IP.dst equals, because I took it from the destination uh, column, right? I literally dragged this IP address from this column to this filter, display filter, and it took it as a filter and applied it right away, right? This is another way. This is a quick way of doing it. And you can do it for source as well, or any other field as well. Okay, moving forward. Uh, let me see. Let me just clear this out. Let me show you the other filters as well now in relation to, I mean, with IP addresses. All right, I just see that you're not able to see the cursor in the recording. Uh, I don't see the cursor. So what I did before was I just, uh, um, you know, clicked on this IP address, let's say, uh, left click on it and literally dragged it and dropped it here, right? That's what I did, I mean, in, in here the display filter right as soon as i did that that applied the filter and uh, literally i'm going to do it right now just to show you um with the marks on the screen so i just clicked on this very ip address left click and dragged it to this filter and there you go it's applied right as easy as that now you can do the same with other fields as well. As I mentioned, you can do it with Delta, but not necessarily with every single field. Um, so it's, it's just asking you to add it to that. I don't want to do it. I'll just do it this way, right? Yeah, so you can do it in this way as well. So I'm just going to click on cross. And uh, let's say, for example, wh why do I say it doesn't apply to everything? Let's say you click on something like OSPF you see, you won't be able to do it. So not every single column, not the values from every single column can be dragged to the display filter so that you can just go ahead and do it. So you can do it for Delta, for example, as I just showed it to you. So you can do it for Delta. Sorry about that. Why don't I see it? Okay, sorry, yeah. Okay, so you can do it for Delta. Uh, you can do it for source as well. You can do it for destination as well. And you can actually uh, grab a few values from here as well. I'm going to show it to you afterwards. Not necessarily drag and drop, but anyways, I'm coming to that now. Not talking about drag and drop there. Okay, so what's the next thing I want to talk about? I want to talk about how to actually do a range of IP addresses. Or let's do a subnet first. If you want to do a subnet, IP.addr. You're going to do equals to equals to and then you're going to mention the subnet itself so you can do 192 168.12.0 slash 24. all right hit enter any ip address in this um, particular subnet any packet which has this ip address which has an ip address in this subnet will be displayed 
And obviously, in this case, there are just two IP, main IP addresses, IPv4 addresses um, of class C, which is 12.1 and 12.2. Um, all the packets consist of these two IP addresses, and therefore, all the packets are displayed, right? 25 packets. That is correct. Oh, let me just show it to you, just to make sure for anyone who has not seen my pre or seen the previous videos in the series. So here you see the total number of packets, and here you see the displayed packets, right? Uh, so no more confusion. But anyways, okay, this is how you check the subnet, the complete subnet. This is how you filter for it. Another another filter is if you want to do for a range, you can do a IP dot ADDR. You can say, hey, if it's no, let's not do it that way. You'll say, let's say, if it's greater than equal to 192.168.12.1, this is the first part of the range. And then you're going to say, and IP dot ADDR, you're going to practically say the same thing, but you're going to give it an upper limit, right? 12.1 is a start. This is where the range is going to start. And the limit, the cap, where do you want to put it? equals to or sorry ip address less than equal to 192 168 dot if i want to include uh let's say 50 as well so if the ip address 50 50 was there in the capture that will be included as well why is that because i'm using an equal to here less than or equal to if i say just less than that would mean dot only till dot 49 49 will be selected 50 will not okay all right so if i go ahead and apply it there you go you see all the packets because obviously everything is in this range so this is how you do for range as well okay so let me just go ahead and remove that let's say you want to exclude an ip address you can do it this way as well ip dot addr it's almost the same thing 192 168.12.1 now you don't want to use this IP address, okay? So what you can do is you can just say, if you know programming, you'll understand this. Not, right? I've I've explained this in in one of my previous videos as well, when I talked about message filters in uh, the Cisco email security appliance. So this is not, right? So not IP address this. So the packet that does not have this IP address, those packets will be displayed. I hit enter. 12.1 is not there in any of these packets that are displayed. And we can see displayed packets, six, right? In these packets, we don't see it. Why is that? Because we see an, we put a not in there in the beginning of this filter. Okay, let's proceed. Okay, we're gonna do a couple more and then we're gonna wrap it up, okay? Let's not, uh, you know, um, make it a very long video. So uh, let's say you want to go for Ethernet addresses, layer two addresses in any of these packets, right? Well, there are just two machines in this case. So uh, one with 12.1 and the other one with 12.2 IP address. Let's say I want to grab this MAC address here, this particular MAC address. What is 7A70? 6C7A70 is the one I'm going to grab, uh, just so I remember, right? 6C7A70. This is the MAC address I want to put in the display filter. How do I do it? There are two ways I can do it, um, at least, uh, or, or possibly more than that, but let's take it one by one. So the first way would be, I can go ahead and start typing it, okay? I can do ETH dot and then ADD, just like I did for the IP addresses. But here I got to put that MAC address. No machine has this IP. Uh, no machine has this MAC address in this packet capture. If I hit enter, I won't see any packets, right? Obviously, but I want one of the MAC addresses that we saw in this packet capture. So how are we going to do that? Let me just cut this, so we can just paste it quickly. This is the MAC address. No, this is not the MAC address. Which MAC address was it? Seven A seven zero six C seven A seven zero. Another way of doing it would be that I go ahead and start typing it, right? So I'm gonna do F A and then colon, then 16 and then so on. Okay, I'm not gonna waste time with that. What I can do is quickly, I can expand this section right here. And I know this is the source. So I'm gonna expand the source right here. I see the address, okay? So I'm gonna right click on this field. 
on this line. I'm going to right click there and copy the value from there. That's it. That's another way. Yes, we got a third way as well if we want to do it quickly. So let me just show you the second one first. Right click, copy, and then value. You copy the value, you go back to the filter, you do eth.addr, remove that MAC address that was there before, and do a control V. Right, you see, I just copied the value from this field, so make sure you do it correctly, right? So I expanded Ethernet 2, expanded source. If I wanted to do for destination, uh, I would have expanded destination and copied the address from here, this field, this line. Now, right now I'm doing it source. That's why I right clicked on this particular row or this field or this value. Right clicked on it, copied it, and then came back to this area, this display filter, and pasted it there. Another way of doing it would be I can just simply right click on it on the address value and say apply as filter. Which one? Well, the selected one, the one. I have highlighted or right clicked on. Apply it, and there you go. You see it right here. It gets applied right there. So, yeah, these are two, three ways that you can use to do it. You can do it for other fields as well, like literally. Now, uh, let me just show it to you in case you want to see it. Um, let's see, address this one right here. Apply as filter, selected. There you go. It just changed, right? So you can do it for IPv4, you can do it for, for literally any other field as well. So, I mean, all, all those that you can apply as, um, as a filter, right? So that's the way. Destination address, right click, this, there you go, with the IP address. So it's extremely flexible and extremely powerful. Whenever you have a packet, you wanna know how do I apply this as a filter, so that I can get all the packets which have this field. Just go to that packet, right click, apply as filter, as I showed you, right? So you right click, apply as filter, select it, there you go, ip.flags, 0x0. That's it, literally. Exadecimal zero, by the way, anyways. Um, yeah, I hope that was helpful. And yes, yes, yes. Uh, let me just clear this out. Just to wrap it up uh, with this, well, there are a lot of filters literally that we can talk about. If there's if there's any specific um, you know uh, topic that you want me to talk about in Wireshark, please do let me know in the comment section. I'll be happy to take it up. Uh, but anyways, just to wrap it up, uh, because I do deal with um, uh, TCP a lot of times. Um, every day. So in order to look for TCP uh, reset flags, you can literally use this uh, filter. tcp.flags.reset equals equals to one. When you apply this filter, if there are any packets, uh, TCP RST packets, reset flags, uh, the packets with the reset flag, then you will see that uh, those particular packets um, selected. Okay, so applying this filter does that. But anyways, there are a lot of options under TCP, as you can see after the dot. If I do TCP dot, you'll see a lot of options here. And literally the list is long. It's huge, right? And when it comes to TCP, I highly recommend uh, going through um, the video tutorials by uh, Chris Greer. He has some great, uh, great video content on uh, on, on TCP and, and Wireshark. So I hope this helps. And um, thank you so much, those of you who are new to the channel, please go ahead and subscribe. And uh, yeah, let me know in the comment section if, if you have any questions or anything. And uh, please connect with me on LinkedIn as well. That'd be great. I'm gonna put my LinkedIn, uh, the link to my LinkedIn profile in the description, or possibly you'll see on the screen as well. Anyways, thank you. You guys have a great day. Goodbye.